Welcome back everybody. In this week's video, we are going to be diving into something called sodium silicate. And we're going to be using this to create a thick slip that we can use for decorating pieces. Like this. So if that's something that you want to see. Or this. Stick around and find out how we do it. So to make your sodium silicate slip, you'll need a few things. The first thing you'll need is dry trimmings and throwing water that is settled, so slip. If you don't have one or the other, you just need at least one. You also need extra dry trimmings to thicken up the slip. And of course, you'll need something to mix it. And I recommend an immersion blender or a stick blender. These are really good for mixing it up. And they're good for mixing glazes too, if you ever get into that. And the last thing you'll need, of course, is the star of the show. And that is the sodium silicate. So let's talk about sodium silicate real quick. Sodium silicate is a deflocculant. And in the ceramic world, there are two things that can thicken or thin out your water solution, your glaze, your slip, whatever it may be. Those are called flocculants and deflocculants. And so the sodium silicate falls into the deflocculant. And if you are confused between those two, think of a herd of sheep. So you have the herd of sheep and you either bring all the sheep together to make it more bunched or you spread the sheep out to make them more dispersed. So a flocculant will bring that flock of sheep together and make your solution thicker. A deflocculant will spread out your materials or your sheep and make it thinner. And so the sodium silicate is a deflocculant. It will thin out the solution you put it in. And in this case, we're going to thin out our slip. And we want it thinned out so that we can then add more clay into it so that we can thicken it up without having to add extra water content. Because water content will cause your slip to crack if you have too much in it. And so that's what sodium silicate is in a nutshell. And I can dive deeper into this and use other, tell you other purposes you can use it for, but that can be for other videos. So if you want to have a deep dive into sodium silicate, I can make another video later. Just let me know in the comments below if you want to see that. But anyway, so what you're seeing is a time lapse of me adding water to the trimmings. And this is over the span of about 20 minutes. Now you can see within that 20 minutes, the water has dissolved the trimmings quite a bit and it's starting to settle out already. And so I'm going to let this sit for another 24 hours. And now we're back and this is what it looks like after 24 hours of settling. You can see that the slip, or in this case, you can see, you can see that the clay trimmings have dissolved completely. It is settled and then the water all floated to the top. So we're going to need to siphon off that water because we don't want that much water in it. And then we are going to mix it up. And a cool thing about this is we can literally just mix it up with a brush for the initial mix. So I'm going to get a container so we can pour all this water into. Same thing because we want to also siphon off the water from here. So I'll show you how to do that really easily. And so you just get another container. You could use a sponge too. But you just take the water and you just slowly pour out all the water. You can always add more water back in. But you don't want to mix it up because then you'd have to wait for it to settle again. Okay, there we go. There's a little more, pour that out. Okay, and now it's really gloopy. So we'll put that on the side. And this is the throw water. This is a lot more watery because of course, there was more water in the throw bucket. So as I pour this out, it won't be as thick. But we'll pour all that water out because like I said, we can always add it back. So this is the first step you wanna do after you get your source, your slip source. Okay, and then whenever I have a throw bucket, I can't pour off all the water all at once. So I tilt it back and then I let the water come back to the pour side. And then I can pour off a little more. Usually the water gets stuck on the back of the container. Okay, so this water I will put on the side. Alright, so now I have my two sources. I have slip that I use for throwing. And then I have my trimmings that I slaked down, I added water and let it dissolve overnight. So I'm going to get a brush and mix it up and you can see the difference in thicknesses. All right, so first one I'm going to mix up is the throw water. You can see that it's watery and then on the bottom has some chunks to it. So once I mix it up, it should get a little thicker. But not much because there was a lot of water in here. It was mostly water and not that much clay. So this is a good start 
if you only have throw water and some dry trimmings, because we are we would just add more trimmings to this after adding sodium silicate to make it thicker. So that is a nice even consistency. We would use the blender, of course, to blend this more. But just to show you that consistency, I wanted to mix that up. Now we're going to mix this one up, and you're going to see the main difference with slaking clay. So as I mix this, you can see how clumpy it is. It's already pretty thick in itself. So this is a much better start because you can see it's already really thick. It almost looks like melted ice cream, whereas this one just looks like milk. So slaking down your clay, your trimmings is much better. So right there, it's so gloopy. Now you're, think, you're probably thinking like, why can I not just add this? This already looks really thick. And the answer is you can, but because there's a lot of water in here still, it will actually crack or most likely crack as it dries. So I do recommend we add the sodium silicate. So I'm gonna put this on the side. And now we're actually gonna use the immersion blender to get this nice and even. So I recommend immersion blender. You could use a regular blender, but putting a stick blender in here is so much easier to mix it up. So we'll put this on the side, we'll plug in the immersion blender and we'll get this thing going. So just a disclaimer as I start creating this slip, most people, well, not most. Some people will recommend you do it systematically where you add a certain amount of water to a certain amount of clay weight to a certain amount of sodium silicate. So you can remake this slip every time and it's consistent. I'm a little more loose with that. And so this is how I do it. So if you follow along, it should more or less get you results that work. But as you use it, if things come up that aren't as desirable for you, you have to make adjustments. So experimentation is key. Test it out. All right, without, with that being said, we're going to start using the immersion blender to get this um, more even in thickness. So we got my immersion blender. Now, keep in mind, this thing is incredibly loud. I'll try to edit out most of the annoying sound, but we're going to put it in all the way. And then we'll go ahead and get this started. Okay, so that first round of blending was just to get this all even and mixed up. And this slip is super thick. It already looks like it can be applied. But I'm going to add the sodium silicate to it, and you're going to notice that this thing is going to basically turn into a very flowing slip, and it's not going to look as chunky. So now we got our sodium silicate. And when you add the sodium silicate, add only a drop at a time and then mix it up and a drop will make a huge difference. So let's get a little spoon so we can add it to it and we'll mix it up. All right, I'm gonna be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of what the what it looks like before and after. So this is the before. You can see from the overhead cam, it barely jiggles. We're just gonna, we're just gonna add a few, like one drop first and we can always add more later. Here we go. That was, I want to say, like an eighth of a teaspoon. Sorry about the non-metrics measurements. Okay, and just that little bit, we'll see how much more flowing this is. So you can see it makes water wetter, right? Look how flowing that is. The water content did not change. It's still the same amount of water, but now it actually flows a lot. So that's what a deflocculant does to your clay. So now it's the same amount of water, but it flows so much more. So I want to thicken this up by adding more trimmings to it, and then I'm going to grind it. So the trimmings I add, ideally you want to crush this up and make it more of a fine powder. But for this demo purpose, I'm going to just put the more smaller trimmings in, a little bit at a time. So this is the lazy man way. And then I'm going to use the immersion blender to grind it all up. So the goal here is to get this slip back to that thick consistency you saw before I added it so that we have that nice full thick slip body. So that 
little bit, already thickened it up quite a bit. And so, you saw I didn't add very much. I added maybe like a eighth of a cup. And so now I would just keep using the immersion blender to grind this down so all those chunky bits are more or less smooth. All right. So now I can see how it looks. And you want to make sure you don't add too much at a time. And so this is where measuring would help you. But you want to make sure you don't add too much at a time because if you add too much clay, it becomes too thick. And then you're going to have to add either more water or more sodium silicate to the solution to get it back to a flowing state or flow-ish state. So it can cause more issues. So I would recommend if you do add too much, add a little bit of water first because too much sodium silicate can give you more issues in the long run. And then try to add it and then see how it looks as you grind it up. Okay, so right there, I'm just going to use this to kind of smooth it out. My brush is falling apart. And right there, that looks pretty good. Got to get a new brush. Okay, it's very thick like frosting. Let me get a new brush because this is not working. Okay, so I got my brush. And one interesting characteristic of sodium silicate slip, as you move it around and jiggle, it's going to feel very smooth and it will actually look like frosting. But the moment it kind of stays put, it will actually start to harden a little bit and it will kind of have a little weird sheen to it and it won't jiggle as much. So when you use this, you have to give it a mix, just like anything else in the clay world, give it a mix before you apply it. And that looks ready to apply. Feels nice and smooth, has a nice thick body. And I am gonna now use this to apply it to a vase to get some nice texture on it. But clean up. One thing, some things to consider as you clean. The sodium silicate slip is something you definitely do not want to mix into your normal reclaimed clay. Because there's sodium silicate in it, if this gets mixed into your normal clay and you try to throw with it, it's going to give you a lot of issues. It may not even th um, throw well because the deflocculated clay is mixed into your regular clay. And because it's spread out, it doesn't have that thickness, um, the particle packing, so that it may not throw as easily as you can. So whenever you have this clay, try to make sure that this stays separate. And if it does get mixed in to any water source that you use to reclaim, you may want to dispose of that water source. And so my hands are incredibly dirty. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to show you how to wrap this up so that it doesn't dry out. And then we'll use it on our vase in the next video to come. Right, and to clean this up, I recommend getting a sponge, a wet sponge, and wiping all the slip on the outside and then the top because we're going to want to cover it and we want to make sure it's airtight. Okay, and then once it's wiped clean, get your container and then put it on top and then close. If you want to make sure that this is super airtight, you can lay a piece of plastic over it and then close it so that it just locks the air in even more. But this feels pretty secure. And then just to clean up this stuff, normal cleanup, just, I like just dropping it in a container of water. And then I'll bring it to my sink to clean. And then wipe all this stuff. So here is the sodium silicate slip. All I need to do is mix it up and then apply it to my piece. And I'll show you folks how to do that in the next video. And so if that's something that you want to see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can see the video as it's released every week. And I just want to say thank you guys for all the amazing support and comments you guys have been giving lately. It was really, it's really awesome to see how much these videos are helping you and assist you through the world of ceramics. So I just want to say thank you and I love the support. And of course, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.